Mm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome to a new tool for Tabletop Simulator. This is my updated trash can code. Now, I use trash cans in all my mods. If you've used any of my mods, you've seen the trash cans. So, there's not a lot to report, really. Basically, what this mod does is if you pick up a whole bunch of junk, and you drop it in the trash can, it'll do something with it if it knows, if it understands what it is. It'll either, it'll move cars to different locations, it'll move them to bags, whatever, you know, say you've got a token, you want to put it in the bin. This is how I do it. Now, this is the bare bones of this, of this uh, code. My bags and my mods do a lot more stuff, like they automatically shuffle decks and flip things around, and there's ways to stuck things underneath cards. That's all superfluous if you're a good scripter, then you can do that. Now this is for medium level users because there's a couple of things you need to understand. One is if you want to use this in your mod, you need to know how to script. And two, you need to be good enough at scripting that you can read my horrendously bad scripting because I'm basically just a copy and paste guru from uh, you know, <laughs> Stack Overflow. But if you can wade through it, then this is a very, very useful from mods and I use it all the time. Now the big difference between this and the old mod, which is why I'm uploading it as a new mod, is that I now use, if you look up at the top, there's like this sort of multicolored thing. This is what I call a global function object. Now I use these all the time now. One of the big problems in Tabletop Simulator, something that Tabletop Playground has completely fixed, is that each individual script is attached to individual objects. There's no way of making global scripts really. So if you have 50 trash bags and you make a change, you have to edit 50 scripts on each trash bag. So what this is, a global function, is that the trash bag code is actually on that object, that glowing object in the top there. And what happens is that the, the, the function there is called by other objects. That means I can edit this and it'll change every single trash bag in the field that is triggering off it. You know, like I don't even need to do anything to make it functional. Like basically I could just grab this thing here and just name it uh, trash. In fact, I can name it trash uh, demo. And Uh, let's just uh, put it down here. Try not, I don't want to drop everything in it. If I just come over here. Is that going to fall in it? Yep, boom. Bam, it's already working. Because it's triggering off the name. And it just means that you can edit and do anything you want. Because some, just because a couple of things didn't pick up because of the... Uh, where I, where I put it, so you're yeah, falling off the edge there. Anyway, you, you get the you get the gist, right? The point is that it's very easy to edit and change because it's actually drawing from here, and I'll show you how that works. Basically, if you go to the global script, there is a little function on onload that sets the trash can global object. Okay, so that's just get object ID, and it's the ID of the global function bag, right? And then there's an on object collision and that just tests objects as they collide. And if the, if the bag name, like the trash bag, has the title trash dash in it, has that at the start or, you know, in it, or is it, or if it's just called trash, it then triggers the trash processing code. And that's simple. That's how it works. And I use these all the time in my mods now, like uh, these global functions and also have global variables. Like, you know, if I have like set up, player set up boards, I don't need to write them out a million times. I just make one set up thing on the global function and then all the board places can read it, stuff like that. Okay, very, very handy. And I've also put it with the hidden text, my hidden texture tool is in the mod. So if you just click that, boom, it disappears. And that way you can set it to non-interactable, hide it somewhere in the mod, uh, out of the way, but easy to click on and just import this tool and make it visible whenever you need to do changes. 
whatever. That's that's the basics of it. If you actually look at the mod code for the bag, it's pretty simple. Basically, it uses two lists. It has a delete list and it has a move list. The delete list is just a bunch of search strings. In this case, del1, del2, del3. But, you know, I... I typically use delete your list for spawnable objects, you know, like health tokens or things that, you know, as they, you don't keep, you know, you just discard them. Boom. That's what I use them for. You can put anything. So that could be like health, money, whatever your list is that you're searching for. Now the discard locations is when you want to move an object to another spot in the board. Like say you want to chuck a token in your bin and then you want it to fly up to the top of the board and drop into a, uh, you know, a bucket of tokens or, you know, you want to go into a, or a card to automatically go to a discard deck or something like that. So the way this works is that the keywords are now here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and cube and oblong. They're the keywords. And then you just have the position and the rotation. And if you want, you can actually add in scale. I haven't added scale in this demo, but you know, you could just type in the scale and it will also scale it. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Just edit that and you're done. Okay. Now, if you come down here, you'll note basically there's three stages. There's check delete, then there's check move, and then there's check deck. The reason why you have to do decks is, right, because if I drop a card in there, it'll go to wherever I've told it to go. But decks, right, what needs to happen is that it needs to split those decks up into individual cards. So it actually pulls the deck out, it, it finds the deck, pulls the deck out, and then splits the deck into individual cards and sends them back into the trash can, trash can to be reprocessed like so. So it takes a little bit longer, but that's the way that functions. So there's three stages. At first it deletes what it doesn't need, then it moves things it can, and then it checks if there's any decks and moves them out. Now, when it's doing the check, you'll note that there's a whole bunch of if else's here. And that's because there's all these different ways to do it. When I first wrote the, the, uh, the bag, the only thing that you could retrieve from a bag was the name, object.name, and a few other things, but like GUI or whatever, like GUID. But object name was the only thing you could really search for. But now there's two other things that are awesome. Basically, uh, if I just open up the mod again from scratch. So I've got three different colored oblongs, okay? So the blue oblongs are named oblong in the name field. The yellow ones are named oblong in the description field. And the, the blue ones is the coolest. This is a completely new function called GM note that I've never had seen before. I only found out about it like about 20, 30 minutes ago when I started doing this mod. And what you have to be in is you have to be in the GM mode, which is the the gray black, you know, the black hand version, all right? And what that means is there's this little thing where you can type in notes here, but no one else can see it. So it's a great place to put in scripting hooks that search for things because you can have it on your cards, but you can still have your cards popping up. So I, this can say three and I can have uh, description of three. And then down here, I could have three card value or, okay, whatever. The point is, so when you mouse over, all you see is card value and description of three, but the actual keyword that's being searched for is here in the GM notes. So this should work if I've done this correctly. Boom, see? Very, very cool. And that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a couple more little things to do, like just in the movement. Uh, you've got drop height. Okay. So the drop height uh, will just add to whatever the object location is. Right. So, so basically when I 
copy the location. I've got these set to zero, right? But I could set them to anything. See these cubes here that these bags were, were at that height. So the drop height is uh, plus two to that. Okay. And that's pretty much the only value you need to change if you want to make it even higher or lower. The mod should determine the thickness using get bounds of the objects that you're moving. So they shouldn't overlap and like explode everywhere. Like that's why if you look at the big columns of objects that drop down, there should be dynamically uh, discovered to be sort of just out of reach. Okay, and that's pretty much it, okay? So, there's a lot more you can do with this if you're a scripter, but this is a base system just to get running. And uh, if you are a modder, I hope you'll like it. If you're not a modder, then you'll probably never use this. And that's about that. I will see you guys next time. Oh yeah, I'm making another mod, by the way. That's why I'm doing this.